time, meaning it has time to get all the way down your whole digestive system into your gut where all your bacteria is. And that's where all the bacteria start using all these vitamins and nutrients and minerals to thrive, to grow and to get rid of all the toxins. Because the bacteria have millions of different functions in the body. Um, they fight toxins, but they also, every single bacteria we have has a different function to our body and is specifically for breaking down a different ingredient. So the more variation of food we eat, the more variation of bacteria and the more variation of functions they have to our body. But so when the food comes into our body and it gets it into the bacteria, the bacteria all have their own um, effect and they release their own nutrients and their own minerals because a lot of things that we eat still need to be processed in a certain way before our body can absorb them. And that's the task of the bacteria. So basically what we're doing, we've got this army of bacteria in our body and we're trying to feed them as much as possible. So it's fine if you eat the crappy sugar or the crappy flour, but the more kind of fiber, the more color uh, in your food, because the color is actually exactly what your antioxidants, it's all the stuff the bacteria needs, is what you're seeing. So vibrant colors is directly affecting your body, um, uh, not just because it's nice to look at, but it is actually what represents the health benefits it contains. Um, so also raw food, the more it's cooked, the less the body has to work. So the faster your body absorbs the kind of empty sugars before it can get down to your gut. So today we're going to be using as much color as possible. We're going to be using um, the, a few of the main ingredients that have extra effect to the body and extra kind of uh, feeding power for our bacteria. Um, and trying to kind of give you kind of a little insight of different techniques that you can use in different ways. Um, if you guys have questions, turn off your mute. Shoot. All right, I'm going to set myself there and I'm going to keep explaining. All right, so first we are going to start our fermentation. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have already fermented before. It's really hyped up at the moment, um, but it has been around for thousands and thousands of years. Um, it was the, one of the main ways to not only preserve food before we had fridges, but it has this incredible effect to the ingredients, not only flavor wise, but it activates um, lactic acid, which is what we need to feed our bacteria in our body. It's one of the most brilliant and tasty ways to get all of that, um, all of that power into the body. So I'm gonna teach you a simple fermentation, sauerkraut which um, so I hope you all like the taste of. It is different than the packaged stuff, so give it a, give it a chance. Um, if you don't like it, it's a lovely gift to give someone, especially in these times. Um, it's just gonna give you a little bit of an insight on how fermentation works, um, but once you get the hang of it, you can endlessly look for it online and all the options and possibilities. The reason I also chose this is we only need one thing, and that's um, uh, gall. What's it called in English again? <laughs> cabbage, a white cabbage. Um, preferably organic, um, wherever you have is fine, but organic has less pesticides, meaning the natural bacteria uh, can thrive more. So, um, just to check if I want to... Yeah, so um, there's lactic acid on all vegetables and fruit, and what happens is when we, when we ferment it, these lactic acids turn the sugars of the ingredients into gases, alcohol, and um, uh, acid, what, what else? Yeah, acids, alcohol, and gases. Um, but, so what, if you're adding sugar, salts, and stuff, that's all used up by the natural bacteria, and that's all gonna become one lovely, um, lovely meal for our body. Um, so we need one kilo of cabbage. Um, I don't know if you guys have weighed it already. I'm just gonna check that. So I'm just gonna get it. I need one kilo of white cabbage. Right, so for me, this is about a kilo. It's like two big hands of white cabbage. And what we're gonna do um, is reserve a big leaf, as big as you can after cutting it, from the outside, and keep that 
because we're going to use it as a lid afterwards it's quite an important part so try and get one as big as you can one big leaf of white cabbage and set that aside um the only thing we need right now at the moment by the way is a very clean jar of about a litre and our salt the reason i said um salt with it without iodine is because you don't want it to be processed the less processed your food is the more natural elements it has to feed the fermentation so just chop it as fine as you can that's what we're going for so just slice it into if you if you have the lines of the cabbage going round if you slice it that way it's going to become really hair thin when it breaks up so i mean it doesn't matter it's not perfect we just want to slice it as fine as possible getting a bowl so get a big bowl probably about that size can you some space to be able to mix it and then when you slice your cabbage just put all your cabbage in your bowl also the little bits doesn't matter like obviously there's lots of little bits like confetti just add that all don't want to waste anything oh and don't worry if you've got the core you can chop that off as well people seem to throw away the center of a cabbage just use it they're the veins of the cabbage, so it contains loads of nutrients as well. Right. Is there anyone who hasn't finished yet? Because then I'll just go quietly to the next step. Does someone need more time? All right, take that. Silence means I can continue, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to check with the weights. Yeah, so um, really simple. Get a spoon. Simple spoon. And you're just gonna, for one kilo of cabbage, you need one generous tablespoon of quality salt. And just sprinkle it over the top. And now it's the part where we need a little bit of patience. And that's to massage it in. So we're just gonna mix it in with our hands, our clean hands. <laughs> So if you've got kids, you can always ask them to join in, mix it up. I've got lots of cuts from cooking on my fingers, so this part always really stings. <laughs> Basically, what we're gonna have to do is keep um, massaging it in, moving it around until the juices in the cabbage are released. But we'll get to the sauce, do the sauce while the salt is um, doing its thing because the salt extracts the moisture from the vegetables a 
you um, find lumps of cabbage, just use your fingers to break it up. You'll notice, if first you think it's stupid, nothing's happening, and then you'll notice that your cabbage suddenly starts to sweat, then you know you're on the right track. Give it a really good thorough mix, massage it in. Make your partner really jealous that you're giving your cabbage more attention than him. All right, mine's starting to start sweat, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And we'll get back to that in a second when the salts have started to do their thing. And then wash your fingers. <laughs> okay, now it's time to um, wash your hands, set the cabbage aside for a second, and get out your blender. I hope you all have one. It can be a big one. Um, I'm using my Nutribullet. It's one that I use for like smoothies and sauces because it's really powerful um, and can take small quantities. But you can use any kind of blender and uh, one of those like soup blenders if you don't have anything else. All right. So we're going to be making a um, parsley and tahini sauce. Um, the reason I chose this one is it's super easy. It introduces you to the use of tahini, which is an incredible source of calcium. Like one tablespoon of tahini is the same as calcium as a whole glass of milk and has loads and loads of other benefits. Plus, if you're cooking vegan, it's an amazing kind of protein that binds really well. So I use it religiously every day out of, out of the pot as well, <laughs> I confess. Um, but it's a really good base to make sauces with. So we're gonna make a sauce now that you can use as a dressing on any salad, but you can also heat up to use for any meal. We're starting with a really basic version, but you can really play around with all kinds of herbs and spices and uh, different kinds of citrus. Um, but I'm gonna introduce you to this, this simple version first. Um, also, tahini has an amazing amount of uh, good omegas, which is one of the main things that you need for your gut bacteria, is omega-3. Six we get automatically from other, th other ingredients, but omega-3 is slightly more rare, uh, especially um, nowadays in the Western way of uh, agriculture. But tahini is a great one. So, um, and another one is, without getting too into every single ingredient, um, all fresh herbs contain an insane amount of antioxidants. Again, that's literally oxygen for your bacteria. So use uh, fresh herbs as much as possible. Not a few leaves, but like bunches of it. Like get it in your meals as much as possible. So we're using parsley today. If you really hate parsley, you can use coriander or anything like that or basil. Or so I've got my herbs here, I've got loads of dill, but we'll start with the basics, and that's our fresh parsley. I hope, um, if you haven't washed it yet, give it a little bit of a rinse and then just shake it out. Um, if you have pets, they'll love that. And then we're literally just gonna, what I do, I'll come closer. Um, I literally just do this. So the stalks are here, you can use that as well. But now for a sauce, when it's quite fine, you literally just twist it like this. And then you have that bunch. So the, these stalks at the top are really fine and they blend really easily. So that you can use later on. So you need, that's what I mean with a handful, like a proper bunch. And you just use that bunch and you just hold it together and chop it slightly. Just go along with your knife so it's broken up and put it straight into your blender. And 
Right. Then we need three cloves of garlic. Um, if you're very sensitive to garlic, you can use just two. Also, depending on the size of the garlic. You just skin it. And then chop it roughly and put it in your blender. The way you can peel garlic easily, by the way, guys, you just chop off both ends and then you use your knife and press it down slightly and then the skin just releases. You get rid of the peel because even in the blender, it always seems to stick around. So get rid of the garlic peel. And just slice it roughly because we're putting it in the blender anyway. This is a raw dressing. Um, so when we finish, we can straight away use it. But if you're serving it on, for example, something like couscous, you can warm the sauce up. The more you heat it, the less nutrients it contains. So that's up to you. If you have hot pasta and you just warm it up slightly, the sauce, then it should be, should get that warm effect without ruining the, the boost of uh, antioxidants you have in there. Uh, then we need three tablespoons of tahini. Give it a stir to the bottom of the jar, but you're not just putting the oil in, but you're really getting in the, the seeds and the fibers of the sesame. It's not rocket science, don't worry about it being a little bit more or a little bit less. Putting that all in the blender. And you've got our lemon. Lemon is easy to squeeze if you put it on your chopping board, put a bit of pressure on it and then just roll it. It breaks the little pods inside. So just doing that. Um, and then when you slice it open, it's really easy to squeeze because the juices are released. So how I efficiently squeeze a lemon without a lemon squeezer, which is more washing up, um, get your knife, get your half a lemon, and you just stick it right in. Then you squeeze your lemon together and twist your knife and it releases all, this, all the juice. And then you can just fish out the seeds afterwards if you have any. But that way, so at the end, you can just like jiggle your knife up and down. You make sure you get out all of those juices. This is an organic lemon. You can put this straight in a jug of water, make a kind of light lemonade. So you need about three tablespoons. It's a little bit more than half a lemon, depending on how juicy it is. I've got a little bit of juice left in there. I left my spoon in to catch the seeds, but you can just take them out if you want. Then we're going to add three tablespoons of preferably filtered water. I sometimes use oat milk, um, thick like barista oat milk, so it's really creamy, but water is just fine. So if I'm cooking for like a uh, pasta sauce, for example, then I would add oat milk instead of water because it gives that extra creaminess. Have I forgotten anything? Oh yeah, salt and pepper. So you just want to put in like a pinch of salt, a few pinches of salt. Again, depending on how much you like it. So. And some pepper. I love pepper. My dad hates it. You find a kind of balance <laughs> for whoever you're cooking for. If you have any kind of leftover herbs, the stalks of basil, coriander, you can put that all in. Uh, it's a great way to use them up. And then, oh, olive oil. You're also getting something. Then about 
half a cup of olive oil. I don't measure it genuinely, I just kind of count seconds. So it should be about three counts of pouring your olive oil with an open top. So that's one, two, three. It's about half a cup. And I'm going to close it up and blend it. Sorry about the noise. Depending on how powerful your blender is, take a few seconds. But it should be this nice, thick, bright green dressing. So I'm just going to set that aside. I'm going to give you guys a few seconds so you can catch up. Um, I'm going to check your cabbage another massage. It should be really wilted by now. And you can kind of squeeze it together a bit as well to kind of break it, break the particles in the cabbage. I'm going to press it down, squeeze it together. Make sure you get right to the bottom and then set it aside again and wash your hands. <laughs> Really interesting thing I read about cooking and your immune system instead of just eating and your immune system is apparently because there's such a direct link between our gut and our bacteria and our head, our brains, by seeing the ingredients, your body already knows which bacteria and which parts of the body to activate. Um, so your digestion goes much smoother. So by cooking from raw, fresh ingredients, your body has loads of time to get ready for processing that food, um, as well as emotionally, because the more love you put into it, like massaging the cabbage, enjoying it, the more love you're giving yourself. And I think that's a really, really important lesson, um, especially in these times, to treat yourself with good stuff. Um, is more than thinking about what you're achieving, like, oh, I have to be healthy, or oh, I have to lose weight. No, it's just about loving yourself and making yourself as healthy as possible, and your body will adapt to that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give you guys a bit of time who, if there's still people blending, making the sauce or clearing up, um, for those who are ready, um, we're going to get our vegetables that I gave you on the list, which is the leek. You just want the light part. The dark part is going to be a bit too tough for this dish, but you can use in a soup. It's, it's not, not edible. So this was one leek washed of course and the outer few layers taken off so just chop all the dark green off keep that aside and put that in a soup or something um or go to the park and feed the bambies <laughs> with it which is what i used to do um then we've got some red cabbage it's about a quarter of a red cabbage we've got half a sweet potato depending on how big your sweet potato is, it doesn't really matter, but just some sweet potato and two carrots. Um, just wash your carrots. Um, you don't have to peel it. Um, just wash it thoroughly. Um, to save some time so that I can talk a little bit while you guys are cooking, um, I've already grated two carrots here and half a sweet potato. Um, but so yeah, I just want to get grating with that. So that's my sweet potato and carrot. And you've got your red cabbage. We want to um, slice as fine as possible. All of the ingredients now, as fine as possible. So the solid ones we can grate, and then the cabbage and the leek, we want to um, slice as thin as we can. Uh, and we also have onion. Um, depending how much you like onion, this one's huge. Um, I'm gonna take 
a small half of this red onion. Again, slice it as fine as you can. Not into a mush, but like fine hairs. As far as nutrition goes, um, the orange, purple, and as dark green as possible, those contain the most, so that's the carotene, um, yeah, the most antioxidants, the most um, immune boosting um, elements and minerals. So you're going to just collect all of that in one bowl. If you really hate chopping onions, you can blend it. It's just, um, I, preferably the texture is better when it's sliced. So that's why, for example, the colour is really important. So, for example, purple cabbage contains more antioxidants than white cabbage. Purple onion contains more antioxidants than white onion. Um, spinach, which is dark green, contains more antioxidants than um, iceberg salad. This cooking class is not insured, so if you cut your finger off, I really am not guilty. <laughs> yeah, you will need your blender, if you're working with oats, uh, you will need your blender again. So in that case, you're going to have to pour your sauce out into another jar uh, and give your blender a little bit of a rinse so we can blend the oats into a flour if you haven't done that yet. So I always keep my jam jars for exactly this reason. Where it's really funny because I, I love making sauces because um, if you just have a jar of sauce in the fridge, if you really can't be bothered to make a meal or be creative, you can just grab any kind of grain or salad or some vegetables and you've got your flavour is in your jar, you just throw it on and you've got a meal and I love that. It's like a quick fix for a meal. Um, and you can also use a sauce as... Um, the base of a dip. So if you blend half and half with chickpeas, you've got a really delicious dip. Or with um, frozen green peas, that's also a really good combination. Or you can put the leftovers in a soup, for example. And this sauce on um, some pasta with a little bit of ground almonds mixed in, I'm telling you. I'm just going to give this a quick wash.
So just keep slicing and grating everything. You know what I love about kind of gut health is this, um, you know, everyone says like, follow your gut. Like it is actually your second brain because apparently there are as many nerve cells in your gut as your entire spinal column. It just shows like how much sensitivity and how much uh, connection there is between our gut and the way we feel and think and live. Dry your blender really well if you're still gonna ground your um, oats, because otherwise it all sticks to the edge. <laughs> If you're working with chickpea flour, you don't have to do anything, of course. For this too, we're going to use some garlic. Um, you can choose how much you want. I again is going to add two cloves. I love garlic. I've been brought up with it, but it's also one of the main ingredients to boost our immune system. The, you know, the amount you should be eating a day is two to three cloves a day. That's the, the ideal situation. It literally disinfects your whole digestive system, has loads of vitamins, and it's just absolute, it's crack for your, <laughs> crack for your uh, bacteria. <laughs> So your garlic, if you're putting that in, chop it fine. And then just like the technique with the cabbage, you put a little bit of salt on it and that extracts the, the, the moisture in the garlic. And then when you put pressure on, on it with your, with your knife and, and pressurize it and slightly like puree it, it's gonna, it's gonna be mushy straight away. So you just sprinkle some salt on top of your garlic. and chop it and then suddenly the juices will release and you can get it really into a fine puree really easily. Or you lose a, a garlic press, of course, but I hate washing them up, so I always try to avoid them. So you chop it up with the salt, and then suddenly you'll notice it's getting really juicy, and that's when you can flatten your knife and press on the garlic, and it becomes a puree. For the oats, you need 100 grams, or the chickpea flour. You don't want 
too many oats, so preferably a little bit less than too much. So it's about a cup, a little bit less than a cup. I'm just going to blend it dry so it becomes a flour. And oats contain loads of fiber, so I've just blend the oats. And that's just fine. Hey Lily, I have a question. Please? Yes, do I have to cut these as well? Because I, I uh, f forgot. Yeah, so you just want to cut it as fine as you can into little rings. Okay. You find it difficult, you can cut it in half lengthways and then cut it really fine. Okay, perfect, thanks. By the way, guys, keep your garlic separate because we're going to cook that a little bit first before we add the other ingredients. Julie, I think you have your together so don't worry if you've already mixed it. Um, and you'll notice we're obviously making more than for one or two people but you can freeze this in really well. You can use it as base of a soup. Um, if you're not vegan, you can add an egg to it. You can play around with this as a base. So once you've got this, you put it in your fridge or freezer and you can um, make other things with it. So that's why I always cook more than just one portion. Take your time. I'm just already getting a pan. My hob isn't on the camera, but I'll be explaining what I'm doing, so don't worry about that.
the guys who are ready, give your cabbage another good massage. Should be really wet now. We're making a simple um, sauerkraut, but you can add like chili to it and garlic, whatever you want. Um, we're starting with the basics, keeping it simple. Does anyone need more time for the slicing? Yeah, you want to chop the um, cabbage really fine as well. So that piece you can chop in half in the lengthways and then chop it sideways. So you've just got a little, like I, my size is this, <laughs> like finger length. <laughs> it's the general kind of thing of shredded, we call it. So as fine as you can get it. Anyone else need more time? Can I continue? Right, I'll explain it slowly. So in your pan, you need a frying pan, in about two tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna put that on the hob, and then we're gonna add our garlic. And if you have it, our two bay leaves, laurita blanches. We're gonna put them in with the garlic and heat it. Not on the highest flame, because then your garlic will burn. So a low flame or setting, uh, I've got electric, like four or five. Actually, it depends on your hob. Okay. So while the garlic is slowly heating up, we're gonna do the last step of our cabbage. So I hope you guys cleaned your jar really well. Now we're literally just gonna put all our cabbage in the jar. You can use your hands. If your hands are clean, it's actually preferable to use your hands and not tongs because your fingers contain bacteria that will activate the others. So you only push it, push down your cabbage into your jar. You think it won't fit. Really push it down hard. If it doesn't fit, use it as the base of your soup or <laughs> cook it up. or make more than one jar. So it's quite important as well, may I add, that you leave a few centimetres above the top, come closer, above the top, because when it ferments, it's going to expand a little bit. So you want to leave a little bit of space but really push it down well. Keep an eye on your garlic, don't forget about it.
family members might start smelling <laughs> your activity in the kitchen now. And then when you've pushed down your cabbage or if you haven't, if you're still slicing, take your time. But uh, we're going to get our leaf that we saved. Make sure it's clean. I just have a little bit of mud, so I'm just going to clean that off. So you've got your leaf. Um, you want to kind of, if it's a bit too big, you can slice the like really solid part, the tough part, you can slice that off. So it's a little bit more flexible. And then you're going to use this leaf to push down over your cabbage. It'll just make sure, I'll come closer again, that your cabbage stays under its own juices. Because the longer we leave it, the more that the salt is going to take out the, the, um, the fluid in, in the cabbage. And you don't want it to go above the moisture. So this leaf is just going to keep that down in your jar. And you put the lid on your jar and then it's literally now which will seem longer now you're locked up at home <laughs> we're going to leave it for one week about seven days at room temperature with the lid on and um, preferably in the dark don't put it straight in the sun um because you don't want to get hot just room temperature for seven to ten days Um, I do advise you to open your jar once a day just to let out any of the pressure that might be building up because there will be certain gases due to the fermentation. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, it's not going to, it's going to taste good from day three probably. The longer you leave it, the more fermented it'll get. But the moment you have opened it officially, um, you want to store it in the fridge because otherwise it will start getting a bit too intense uh, unless you like that. So seven to 10 days, open it every day, love it, maybe sing to it at night. <laughs> Don't forget your garlic. Okay, my garlic has gone kind of nice golden color. So it's time to add all of your other veggies. Is everyone ready to add their veggies? Okay. I'll wait for a second while you um, finish off your ferment. I'm gonna add all of these vegetables. I'm waiting with the carrot and the sweet potato for a few minutes. So my pan's really full, um, but it'll reduce down. So You can add then another little drizzle of olive oil on the top. You don't have to stir it straight away. So I literally just lip, uh, lightly shake my bottle over the vegetables, just give it a little coating on the top. You can raise the heat a little bit in a few minutes and then we start stirring.
because there's so much volume in your pan, you don't want to raise the heat too quickly because then the bottom will burn and the top will still be raw. So that's why we just leave it on quite like medium to low heat so that it has time to get through all the layers and slowly start stirring it when you notice that it's starting to steam. This is a good point also, if you have leftover herbs, like stalks of herbs, I've got a little bit of kind of old floppy coriander. Um, this is a time with the stalks that you can slice it up fine and add it to your pan. I love chopping herbs, the smell just makes me happy straight away. So I just sprinkle that over. Okay, meanwhile, get your ground oats or your chickpea flour and add about half a cup, if you've got oats, half a cup of water. If you've got chickpea flour, a little bit more and just add it, pour it in cold water and give it a stir. Then you want to add a teaspoon of salt to your oats or chickpea flour, or a little bit, a small teaspoon, depending on your palate, and some ground pepper, again, depending on how much you like pepper. I'd say about half a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon. Mix that in. Give your vegetables a stir. Should be smelling really nice now. I left the bay leaves in. If you're using it, you can just fish them out at the end. The longer you leave them in, the more flavour they'll give your food. Then in the meantime, get your turmeric. It can be freshly ground turmeric. Um, I'm using powder now. And you want about a teaspoon to a tablespoon, depending on how much you like the flavour. Uh, I'm going to add a tablespoon because um, I love it. And and again, turmeric is one of our main immunity boosting ingredients. Turmeric's effect is only activated when it's heated. So that's why with like golden lattes and when we're cooking with it, we heat it in the pan first and then stir that in to your chickpea flour or your oats. You want it to be like thin like pancake batter so if it's too dry and sticky add a little bit of water. Ok, 
Try not to splash any of this turmeric mix on your clothes. So it should be like, I can't really show you, like a pancake batter. When you shake it, then it really goops around, moves around. And again, don't forget to stir your vegetables. At this point, if you do come across your um, bay leaves, you can take it out. All right. Okay, if you can all keep up with me, we're now going to add our carrots and sweet potato to our mix in the pan. <laughs> I'm going to try and show you. Um, it's just got a lot of volume. Scoop from the bottom and fold over into the middle. That way you're going to get in your sweet potato and carrot easily. So scooping and folding into the middle. Okay, at this point you can also add other spices, so you could add um, anything that's like the Indian spice category will be great with this. So coriander seed, cumin, uh, whatever you want, you can do that, or you can just keep it simple and stick to the turmeric. Now turn your heat down to as low as you can. Not off, but just really low. Because we don't want the sweet potato and the carrot to get soggy. We just want to kind of warm it through and cook it lightly, but not to make it one big mush. So you should only be cooking your carrot and sweet potato for about two to three minutes max. Check I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, so now it's time to add our mix. What we're going to do is we're going to pour it over our batter, give it a good stir, and then let it just sit without stirring it on, on the low heat for a bit. So at the bottom it's going to start like caramelizing, and then we're going to stir it and let that cook again. 
So we'll just pour it over, give it a stir, and then leave it on the low heat to cook on the bottom. I'll try and show you. So just, oh, I've got my spatula here. So I'm just gonna pour it over. I will use my spatula in a minute to get out the last bits. So it should look like a little omelette you've just poured over your, your veggies. See if I can do it like this. Aha! All right. So I'm just going to mix this in a bit. Chickpea flour does um, dry out a bit more than oat. you like um, Mediterranean flavours more, you can add oregano, rosemary, thyme, anything like that, paprika, um, so it'll go more Mediterranean, or you can, as I said, you can go more Indian style by adding things like turmeric, uh, more turmeric, um, ginger, I love, so you can put some fresh ginger in this if you want, um, play around with it. So just mix it in really well, thoroughly, and then let it kind of steam and cook on the bottom. You can raise the heat a little bit if it's not reacting enough. I've just realized I haven't actually told you what we're making. <laughs> Surprise. Um, it basically, I don't know if you've heard of hash browns, but that's like grated um, uh, potato that they then cook with egg and make these kind of pancakes. And it's inspired by this, but it's a kind of raw, reinterpreted um, hash brown. Um, so we could just call it hash. Um, also, because it's like the addictive hash for your gut, maybe, playing with words. Um, and then we're going to be adding our sauce. Um, and a fresh salad. So it's like loads of colours, loads of nutrition in a bowl, great for lunch, great for dinner, um, lovely topped with any kind of seeds. Um, you can also add a grain if you're really hungry, so like buckwheat or lentils will be delicious with this. But it's just to show you what you can do with a few of these ingredients and show you something different as well. So you could also use the, this as the base of a soup as well. So if you just added some stock to some of that and then cook it and blend it up, you'll have a delicious soup. Um, yeah, be a bit creative. But it's, um, yeah, I love this kind of stuff because you have it in a Tupperware in your fridge 
and you just grab it, eat it cold or hot, and you've just straight away got this yummy meal to sit now, sit on the sofa with your pajamas on, and just, I love it. Um, yeah, if you, eat, if you eat eggs, it's really delicious if you mix eggs with it and then make a kind of um, tortilla. Um, that's just an idea. But the chickpea, if you add more chickpea water mix, it'll have a, a vegan omelette effect if you want it. So just gonna check the mix. Don't overcook it because you want the bit of texture, a bit of crunch to bite into. And also if you're keeping it for a few days, um, if you're reheating it, it'll get softer. So it's best if you um, keep it a little bit crunchy the first time so that it lasts for a few days. Um, again, if you have a bowl with any kind of grains, then this on top, bit of tahini or your lovely dressing, you're ready to go. In the meantime, I asked um, for you to get some olives. Um, I've got a mix here of green and uh, black olives, but they still have the seeds. So I'm just gonna take a handful of these and take the seeds out, the pits. Um, if you haven't done that either, the easiest way to take pips out of olives is by squashing it with your, with your knife downwards onto your board. And then you can use your fingers to break it open and take it out. So if you're cooking for two people, I would say about 10 or like five olives per person is going to give it a nice flavour. If you don't like black olives, you can use uh, green. Also really lovely with this is some chopped uh, sun-dried tomato. Be lovely with this. If you have um, olives without pips now, you can just chop your olives really roughly. You want bits of it. Don't chop it into a puree, but just chop it roughly. I'm making this for my family, so we're four people. So I'm doing a bit more. Uh, also, this mix in a tortilla wrap is delicious, just as another lunch idea. And of course, if you're not vegan, you can add cheese to this, or vegan cheese. Taste your mix, by the way, and check for salt and pepper balance. Chop it roughly. <clears throat> And the reason I have olives with pip is that it just keeps much more flavour in it. So if you're keeping it for a longer time, if you have pips in your olives, it'll contain much more flavour. There we go. Scrape that to the side. And then in the meantime, we're going to make a little bit of a um, quick kind of green salad thing just to go with it. Um, I went to an organic farm and I have some really lovely colourful um, chard, uh, some rocket and spinach. 
whatever leaves you have, um, give them a little bit of a wash and just slice them roughly or tear them up with your hands. You just want a handful of salad per person. I'm just gonna wash this. I have got a salad spinner. So I just put it in a kitchen towel and just shake it lightly. Seven eighteen. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Will this one end in forty five minutes? No, it's not. Uh, well, we can take the time you need. The original plan was normally an hour and a half, but we can yeah. take more time. Definitely. No, perfect. We're nearly ready. It's just so that it doesn't cut off. Um, So I've got some rocket here, I've got some chard. I'm just gonna chop it roughly. And then the spinach I like to tear because it's nice when you're eating, you have different textures. I'm not putting the, I've got organic uh, spinach. The stalks are quite tough. Um, so I'm not putting in the salads, but I'm keeping them because then you can put it in your next kind of pesto blend. You can turn the heat off of your vegetables, by the way, if you haven't done that yet. Just to make sure they're not overcooked. And then just kind of, uh, so I've got a little bowl here and I'm just using my fingers just to break up all the leaves. You can put any kind of salad dressing on this. Um, or just some nice olive oil, balsamic vinegar, something simple. You can now do two things. You can also use your sauce as a dressing. Then it becomes like a Caesar salad, um, like really thick layer on your salad. I prefer it separately because it's like fresh salad and then you've got your sauce on the side. So with this one, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of olive oil to this, these leaves. And then I'm gonna add a splash of balsamic vinegar. Walnut oil or something like that, like a nut oil will be really nice on this. Just a little splash. I don't want too much flavor because we've already got other flavors I want to stand out. And then a tiny bit of pepper. I'm not adding salt because I've put vinegar on there. I find it too much, salt and vinegar. Um, find that too empowering. And then I use my fingers always to mix my salad so you don't break anything, it massages it in. You can add some seeds to this, anything you like. Only put the dressing on your salad uh, if you're gonna eat tonight and eat it like now, because after an hour, it'll go all kind of mushy. So only dress it when you're ready to eat, or just before, like now. So I've just shaken it up and it's just simple salad. Um, I've also got some other herbs, a few fresh leaves. I'm just gonna put that on the top, just let it fall on top. It looks pretty. And then I've got um, some beautiful mustard flowers uh, from the farm as well. I'm not expecting you to have this. <laughs> But for example, if you go for a walk and you find dandelions, um, what's it called in Flemish? Um, you can eat those leaves. So just pick a few, not by the roadside, but like a bit of nature so it's clean. Um, and you take off the petals and those petals you can use um, on your salad to decorate it. I'm gonna use these mustard flowers to make it pretty. But yeah, the, the wild foraging 
dandelions is a great one for decorating salads. Um, in French, it's pisson lit, by the way. Really healthy as well. So this is my salad so far. So it's just got the flowers, the herbs on top. And then when you serve it, everyone gets some herbs. And then because of the chard, it's got some lovely red veins in it. So that's the side that's ready. Now you can choose um, for serving up because we basically finished. I mean, depending on how the speed of everyone's cooking. Um, for serving, um, you can heat the sauce up or leave it cold. Um, just put it in a little pan with a tiny bit of water if you want to, and then just heat it through so it's warm. Um, and then literally just gonna Get a big spoon. If you're not ready to eat yet, you can just put a, a lid on your pan and wait until you're ready to serve. Put this in a bowl if you're eating it in the sofa with a film. <laughs> or what I quite like to do, if I'm serving it up, you can play around with it. But I make a kind of little nest. If you've got grains, you can put it under or on top. So it's about four people, so now I've used a quarter of. Then you have your sauce. If you've got a lid, give it a bit of a shake before you serve it. And then it's gonna, I like it if it's got like little random dollops. It looks natural. And then when you serve it, I'm gonna use my hands now. You can put some roasted seeds on there. And then you've got your olives. And you just place it around. Get a few of those flowers on top. Again, olives, loads of fiber, loads of nutrition. And there we go. Let's see if I can show you. This is my bowl, <laughs> my plate of food. There we go. So you can store all of that. It'll all last for um, it'll all last for at least a week in the fridge. The sauce even longer. Um, play around with spices and ingredients. And just remember, so you got turmeric is a great one. Raw vegetables as much as you can, but sweet potato is a wonderful one. Uh, go for color as much as possible and variation of color. So that quote of like eat the rainbow is genuinely a thing. Um, then you've got your fermentations, so that can go to kombucha, to kind of sauerkraut, uh, kimchi, even yogurt and cheese, vegan or non-vegan, is a fermentation, will feed the your gut bacteria. Um, and please don't hesitate to uh, send me a message via Instagram or, or WhatsApp or whatever if you have questions. Um, keep me up to date on your, on your sauerkraut. Um, good luck with that. I uh, hope you can enjoy it or give it to someone if you're if it's not your thing um and yeah now is the time to shoot with questions for now um but thank you so much for joining and i hope that you uh feel like you learned something <laughs> has anyone got questions thank you so much Lee. that was really amazing yeah i'll give a moment for everybody's questions will you be making it too sylvie Yes, I will definitely be making it too. I didn't manage to get myself ready in time uh, and finish work early enough to, to get prepared. <laughs> it's fine. Someone also will, um, I'll be sending this, uh, the recorded version of this to a girl yeah. who can make it because of her kids. So it's something that you can pause and replay and catch up on. Yeah. Um, so if anyone so, wants the recorded version, just send me a message and I'll send it through to you via WeTransfer. 
Yeah, we have the recorded, and so then I'll put it on the Art of Tech YouTube Perfect. channel. Perfect. Um, so it will be public, and people can just access it anytime. Perfect. Anyone else got questions for me? Everyone just really hungry. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you can make your family, your loved ones, your cat or your dog happy with this food. Um, and yeah, I'll speak to you soon. And please join next week one. We're going to be making gourmand, healthy, um, comforting food as well. It'll also be three different versions of dishes. Um, and I'll send you through all the ingredients that you need um, once you've either paid or you send me a message and I'll uh, send it through. All right. Lots of love to everyone. Take care, hope you're all feeling a little bit sane and uh, bon appétit. <laughs>